Forgetting is natural, but when something in the brain goes wrong, it becomes a red alert signaling something grave, a neurodegenerative disease. Loss of memory is indeed a distinctive feature of diseases such as Alzheimer's, but also of CJD, or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, the infamous human form of so-called mad cow disease. CJD is caused by prions, a type of protein that was identified as an infectious agent in 1982. Since then, it has been discovered that prions not only play a role in the development of diseases, such as Alzheimer and Parkinson, but they are also responsible for other illnesses so horrific that they are reminiscent of an ancient curse. Like the so-called fatal familial insomnia, The first known patient of this terrible condition was Giacomo, a man born near Venice in 1791. When he was 45, Giacomo suddenly stopped being able to sleep. Days and nights passed in an endless stream of waking nightmares. He was trembling, delirious, stricken with dementia. Finally, after months of tortures, he died. But the gene responsible for all this had already been inherited by some of his children. One generation after another, it was passed down. Giacomo's family is one of the few tens of families in the world in which the prion alterations that lead to fatal familial insomnia have been detected. But what else is due to prions? And why has evolution allowed them to exist in our body? In spite of decades of studies, prions are still relatively mysterious molecules. Adriano Aguzzi, working in Zurich, has devoted his working life to the study of the nature and function of prions, achieving spectacular results. Prions are among the thousands of different proteins normally produced by our bodies in healthy conditions. The problems begin if they change their three-dimensional conformation and assume a pathological shape. In this form, they induce other prions to adopt this wrong shape. These pathological prions then pile up on the surface of the brain, killing the cells that transmit nervous signals and leading to a devastating disease. If our body makes this prion protein, there must be a good reason, because the prion protein is potentially extremely dangerous. Therefore, if it wouldn't have an important physiological function, it would disappear in the course of evolution. So for the past 20 years, we have investigated in depth whether what might be this reason. And what we have found is that the prion protein is expressed by nerve cells, and it helps maintaining the health of the sheaths that envelope the nerve cells. And in its absence, these sheaths become sick, and this provokes a disease. In other words, prions seem at first glance to be an innocuous bunch of Dr. Jekylls. Usually, they quietly go about their useful jobs inside our bodies throughout our lives. But sometimes, they suddenly turn into Mr. Hyde. And if that happens, they can eventually kill us. To cure and possibly even to prevent prion diseases, we need to exactly understand how prions are built within the cells, what are the stimuli that uh, lead to the production, and uh, how this production is regulated. To find answers to these very complex questions, Aguzzi's group conceived a project of titanic proportions, carried out with the support of systemsx.ch. In every cell of our body, there are more than 25,000 genes. And modern technologies uh, allow us uh, to switch off every single one of these genes. 
And what we are trying to do is to understand uh, upon switching off uh, which gene the cell loses the capability to produce prions. Such an enormous task would not even have been conceivable with the instruments available only a few years ago. It's a complete change of perspective. We do not yet know what we are going to find. But if we find something, and I'm pretty convinced that we will, this will be completely unexpected and it will open entirely new horizons for our research. Since Galileo, the scientific method has consisted in formulating a hypothesis that must be verified with experiments. It is a bit like guessing where treasure might be buried in the desert, and then going out and digging for it to find out. By contrast, the large-scale screening conceived by Aguzzi's group is like combing through the whole Sahara and examining what's left in the sieve. So far, Aguzzi's group has screened about 6,000 genes. And just as it is often the case that fortune favors the bold, they have found something interesting. Thanks to our project, uh, we have already found one gene uh, which controls the production of the normal prion protein. And what is most exciting is that this gene can be controlled itself uh, using uh, relatively regular drugs. So the hope uh, would be that uh, on the basis of these findings that we might actually even propose a therapy for uh, Kreuzfeld-Jakob disease and similar diseases. Uh, and it even goes further than that, because at the molecular level, Kreuzfeld-Jakob disease is very similar to other diseases which are extremely common, such as, for example, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So on the long run, my greatest hope would be that the discoveries that we are making in the frame of prion diseases may even be applicable to much more common diseases.